What's good YouTube, DX here again, and I'm bringing you another video, another tutorial on how to do this smooth whip slash pan effect you see right here. If that interests you, stay tuned. So we're gonna be doing this effect inside of After Effects. First thing you'll wanna do is roto brush out your subject. As always, I have my roto brush done already. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is duplicate the layer and delete the roto brush from the bottom layer. After you've done that, it should look something like this. Next, you'll wanna to go to Effects and Presets and type in Offset. After that, you'll drag Offset onto the bottom layer. After you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to make a keyframe on Shift Center 2 at the beginning of the clip and then move on along to the edge of the clip and go ahead and add 10 times to the format, which would be just adding a zero on that. After you've done that, it should look something like this. You'll see that the background has changed and shifted over. Now you'll wanna to go to the keyframes and play with them in the graph editor. After you've done that and selected the keyframes, you'll wanna go down to Easy Ease. After you've done that, you'll wanna take this edge right here and move it along right here and take this other one and move it down closer to the middle. After you've done that, your shape in the graph editor should look something like this. Doing this just makes the startup of the effect just slow as it gradually builds up to the actual effect. Once you've done that, you'll have something along the lines of this. Now that looks nice, but it's not exactly what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and add some motion blur with either CC Force Motion Blur if you don't have RSMB. And when you do that, you'll wanna turn the motion blur samples up to 100 so that it's, it has something to you know blur off of. Once you've done that, you should have something that looks like this which is the effect we want. Now, if you do have RSMB, then I would recommend using that instead because it's a little easier. It takes a little bit less power to use than turning up your samples all the way to 100. And as well as it just generally looks better than Force Motion Blur does. But that'll be all for this tutorial. If you guys enjoyed, I hope you hit it with a like. If you guys have any other video ideas, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments and I'll be glad to do them. That being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.